What is up, Rap Potential YouTube, and welcome to today's video slash some more rad formation on the Rap Potential YouTube channel. So, what are we talking about today? Well, you're probably here if your pesky beehive oil cooler has an oil leak, or you actually want to take advantage of a proper oil cooler setup on your RX-7. And this is going to be Similarly, I mean, it's just a rotary engine thing, but we're going to focus on mounting it in a first generation RX-7 because that's typically where you're going to find those beehives at. So, first things first, what is the function of an oil cooler? Well, it does exactly what it says it does. It cools the oil. Now, the beehive oil cooler is a water, is i.e. like a liquid to liquid oil cooler versus... Your regular front mount oil cooler, like this one right here, this big one, which I'll just go ahead and get that out for you, versus this one, which is a air to liquid cooler. Does that make sense? So you can probably see that with um, intercoolers. You have water to air intercoolers and air to air intercoolers, etc. Your radiator is an air, um, air to water intercooler, but the reverse of what an intercooler thing does. Er yeah, you get the picture. So, how the Beehive works though. This thing mounts to your regular oil filter location on any standard rotary engine. So you can see right here, oil filter, you have a feed and a return for the oil filter there. So you have pressurized oil. So, there's two bolts on the bottom and then one extra one right there. You gotta take off. 12 mil, 10 mils on the bottom. Now, on the bottom of that beehive oil cooler, there are two O-rings. And if I have a pedestal not attached to something, which it doesn't look like I have one readily available, anyways, there's two O-rings on the bottom of this pedestal right here. They tend to leak, and when they leak, you might lose oil pressure, and when you lose oil pressure, you lose engines. So keep that in mind. If they do start leaking, they're a real pain in the butt to get to because the beehive's all there. Um, here's like another variation, the short one, same there, the short one. Um, anyways, here's what this looks like without your oil cooler. So you can see the flat spot there, the two holes, two bolt holes on the outer edges. Those two bolt holes on the outer edges are threaded as well for an M, M8, I believe. Or, yeah, I think it's an M8. So, anyways. Slight aside, but back to how this works. So you have engine coolant comes in right here, and then engine coolant comes out right here. Okay, this coolant line goes to right here. This coolant line goes back into your heater core. Does that make sense? So to see it on the uh, on the car over here, you have. One heater core feed right here, which is the one that comes from this side, there's a T. And then you have the other heater core feed, which goes down here, which is just like the regular non-beehive oil cooler cars, and that comes into the right side. So, if you want to remove the beehive oil cooler and install a different oil cooler, I highly suggest you have an oil cooler on your car. If this is the only one you have, run it. If you can't find another oil cooler, run this. It's better than nothing. You gotta have an oil cooler for a rotary. The oil runs real hot. So, if you want to remove this, now, this is what you gotta do. First things first, take it off. Second thing, second, clean everything, okay? Now, you're gonna need to cap off one of these two coolant ports, or, or, if you have the engine out of the car already, you can cut this off, not the T part, but cut the whole 90 degree looking piece off right here, like back behind that. So that way it leaves you with just this, like a straight one. This is just a regular non-beehive car. So that way it leaves you with this, just cut it, put your regular coolant hose back on there. Now, this upper one, where it goes, over here, you're gonna have to cap off the end of this T right here. So you have this hard line runs down your frame rail all the way to the bottom of your radiator. You have to cap that side off. Now, getting to the oiling part of this whole oil cooler change swap thing. You will need to find a short pedestal. You can find one like this, which is kind of a taller one. This is more old school. You'll find like in the 70s cars. And then the later model cars would have the very short one like this. 
Now, you gotta find one of those, put it on there, two 10 mils, get new O-rings, a little bit of silicone, good to go, make sure it's real clean. For the oil lines, there's two oil lines on your rotary, your oil ports. So right here, there's this line, and right here, there's this, or this port and this port. Now, for your beehive, the oil circulation feed part of the whole beehive oil cooler, you're gonna see there's also a big old oil port on the back of this and there's a hard line that's going to run all the way to the front which is this hard line right here so this hard line right here sits like this on your motor okay just like this bam bam that's where that hard line goes you're going to remove this hard line throw it in the dumpster or sell it to the next guy that has a leaky one but uh, most likely he's just going to swap to a regular oil cooler because that's what I would do so remove the hard line, you got the beehive oil cooler removed. So now you have one open port. On these motors that have beehives, this hole right here legitimately has a block off in it. It's just a bolt. You can unbolt it. I don't think I have, oh yeah, here we go. Right here, this is what's in that. Right there, it looks like a drain plug, okay? Take that out, save it. It's great for when you're moving engines around, that way oil doesn't leak out the bottom. Take that out. What you need to find, you will have this fitting already to fit a stock oil cooler line. You'll need to get a, in my opinion, what I would probably run is get on like Jegs, any place you can get your AN fittings, get a stainless steel metric fitting that fits this and converts to a dash 8 AN. Get whatever metric fitting this is, they are different. And get that fitting to convert to a dash 8 AN. Then run a stainless steel hard line from here up to the front to your oil cooler and run the other hard line to here from your oil cooler, okay? That right there will can complete your oil cooling circuit and uh, you will need to verify with the oil cooler you are running which one goes to which. So for example, this oil cooler here, the feed from the rear of the engine goes in the top and the return from the front of the engine um, return from the oil cooler out and goes to the front of the cover yep words and stuff and I don't really know if it's if it's feed from the rear to the front to then back to whatever or if it's feed from the front through the cooler then to the rest of the engine but just that's how that stock oil cooler is oriented that's how it works so now I'm going to show you kind of where you could mount said oil cooler and as far as those fittings go legit it's as simple as like you get you a line like this this line right here, you can see that little stainless fitting there that connects to this. Get you one of those. Here's the front one. I just have them threaded to this same line so I don't lose the uh, metal fittings and I just have to make a new line for the short one. Because one of these lines is really short. Um, that goes from basically, imagine your front cover of your engine right here. It only has to go from there to there and the other one comes from the back to the front. So, fun fact. You could probably make these lines for 80 bucks, under 100 bucks probably buying all the bits. Um, some people probably sell a kit, but the oil cooler mounting. So these cars have a really good, like I call it a shark mouth, the area that sucks air into your radiator and they're very ducted right here. So the worst thing you can do, or at least I don't like doing this, is stacking coolers on top of coolers. So you don't want to put your oil cooler in front of your radiator, right? Try to mount it somewhere where it can get fresh cold air and not inhibit airflow to the next cooler. But if that's the only place you got to put it, then by all means put it there. See what your temps do. Make sure you're not hurting it. So if you have some Mishimoto Air oil cooler, you could put it up in front of that. But if you're OEM and OEM spec plus awesomeness, and you can find, if you look up there, I got two oil coolers, or like this one, there is a difference, but an SA, so 1978 to 1980, and then I can't confirm for 81 to 83 or all the other 12A cars. I don't think those had a front mounted oil cooler, but an SA or a GSLSE had a front mounted oil cooler. Big, nice factory one, and they fit. However, if you have a 12A car, the GSLSE one and the SA one, there's no mounts on the bottom of your radiator to be able to mount it. So, I tried to find a radiator that had the mounts, but I couldn't. 
you can see this one, which is out of a GSLSE, has been modified to accept the early first gen um, style oil cooler. But um, if I can find my flashlight real quick, which usually that never happens quickly, um, we'll go out to the car and I'll show you about where it would sit. But before we go there, you will need to fabricate a mount off the bottom of your radiator or off the frame rail to mount that wide oil cooler like this in between here. Usually they have flat mounts like this on them. See right there and right there. Here's kind of more of a profile view of it. Right there you can see. This is literally a piece of angle iron like softly rubber mounted to the factory shroud around your radiator. So you can do that. But my thing is, is that sits underneath the radiator so from the front you literally just have like an extension of your radiator and then you're good to go. I was going to draw it, but so from the front of your car, your radiator sits here, your oil cooler literally sits here, and then you make a little bracket to mount it to like your frame rail right there. So rad oil. And your lines should come off on this side and both go that way. Now, you might ask. What if I can find an FC oil cooler? So, the main you'll have to make a bracket and mount it yourself. They're a little bit bigger. The main difference, though, between an FC oil cooler and one of these, the FC has an oil fill fitting on this plane of the oil cooler right here. I think it's on the top. And then it has one that goes straight in at the bottom. Now, that might complicate things if you have first-gen oil cooler lines like this one. This is an FC oil cooler line right here. So you can see this piece right here that one would connect to the front cover but that one is not the same it's also a lot longer so keep that in mind when you're sourcing these oil f oil coolers that you need to uh, watch the fittings what I say get an oil cooler mount it then go find the right dash a n fittings get you some stainless line get you some of those twisty crimp connector things make your own lines it's really not that hard and it's it just works so much better they tend to not leak you do have to be really careful on these factory oil coolers they are 30 years old they do like to crack right in here around the fittings so if you're trying to take a fitting off like of a stock one or you're pulling one from a junkyard um, you might break it that's just part of it uh, especially with all these old parts so we're gonna go out here and look at this car real quick and then we'll come back in here to show you. I just want to show it to you on a GSLSC um, where the oil cooler goes. All right, guys. So I want to apologize for the terrible lighting. But from right here, you can see the short oil cooler line, the long line coming to the back of the engine right there. I'll highlight it with words. And now it connects up. So this is an SA. This is my silver car, the mouse. That right there is how it's mounted. You can see it mounted to the bottom of the radiator fits nicely. Mine got smashed with the jack ones, but they're pretty durable. So, that's pretty much how, I, or I guess pretty much, that's how I would do it um, if you're trying to put a different oil cooler on. The factory ones work great, they fit great, um, but you will have to build mounts for it. Some of the aftermarket ones just don't have enough, like they're either not um, like a dual pass or something, so you got to figure that out because they don't effectively cool. Like an eBay one doesn't really do a good job because it doesn't actually pump oil through the whole thing. Um, but like a good Mishimoto one would be fine. You just have to find a place to mount it. So, with that, this is a great example of if you comment on a video and you want a video made, I'll make it. So, feel free to uh, comment below any more videos you want me to make, how-tos, whatever. If you've seen how something's done on my car, you want to try to do it to yours, I'll gladly make it. So, thanks for watching. Keep it rad.